three statistical secrets that you need to know heading into the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix. Welcome to the pit wall, your stop for fantasy Formula One content. You can like and subscribe for more content like this. I'm J Jack and let's go. The first statistical secret is streaks. There is only one driver eligible for a streak this race and that would be Signs, who can get plus five points for a quality streak. The two teams that are eligible for a streak is Ferrari with a race streak that could be plus 10 points or Alpine, which could be eligible for a power streak plus 15 points. That is if Alonso and Ocon are able to qualify in the top 10 and finish the race in the top 10. So let's compare our options for this race and I'll kick it over to our Google spreadsheet so that we can see together. The link will be in the description below. We're looking under the column for streaks. So signs, he has completed a total of three streaks this season. You can see everyone else on the right. Signs has actually accomplished more streaks than Leclerc. And then of course your front runners like Verstappen, Hamilton, Botas, and Perez have the most streaks, whether quality or the race. So that means that signs outside of the top four is tied with Gasly for being able to get the most streaks. And he would break that tie if he's able to get his quality streak this race so it seems like he has been consistent now down to our constructors alpine has had a total of no streaks this season and they're eligible for the first time this race red bull has had eight followed by mercedes eight ferrari five so this is really difficult if you're wanting to pick up alpine because they've never been able to accomplish any streak whether quality or race over the course of the whole season ferrari has been able to do it and maybe they'll do it again but then that brings us to the big bad news Leclerc crashed big heavy at the end of free practice session two that puts a huge worrisome question mark over Ferrari as a potential constructor option because here's the thing we don't know what is damage in Leclerc's car he has a track record of getting crashes on street circuits back to a couple seasons ago he probably would have got pole position won that race crashed out preparing for that then Monaco this season he got pole position crashed out wasn't able to start the race and now here we are at Saudi Arabia and he's crashed out big time again so he could potentially finish in the top 10 but what penalty is he going to take if they have to change an engine or something else we don't know and so you want to take close care in how he looks with the repairs going to tomorrow but this is a big question mark you need to have on any driver you're looking at it's just like Singapore which brings us to our second statistical secret the track the Jeddah Corniche circuit is the second longest and second fastest track on the calendar. It is touted as the number one fastest street circuit. And because of that, there is a lot of things for the very first time that drivers are having to get used to, which means that you need to pay attention. How are they performing? How are they progressing over the course of the free practice sessions? Because it's a night race, just like with Singapore and just like we witnessed with the last race with Qatar, free practice session two is the best indicator of how a driver will perform for qualifying because it is the only time that you get similar times. This is why Verstappen got on the radio says, no, I need to do my qualifying times, even if he had a heavier fuel load because free practice session one and free practice session three are earlier in the day, not the same effect. But then with Qatar's free practice session two and three, there were some drivers that looked like they were improving in free practice session three and then got knocked back down when qualifying started because like I said, free practice two is the best indicator because it's at the same time. Free practice three is way too early for you to draw conclusive results. Free practice three is still important because you need to know, is someone gonna crash out? Does it seem like there's a huge pace difference? And that is where you can still get a little bit of an insight. And that brings us to our third statistical secret pace. What I'm about to share with you, you have to balance it out because of all the traffic that we were experiencing. People were not able to get a clean lap. So AWS's predictions for qualifying pace, Hamilton fastest, followed by Bottas, then Verstappen, then Sainz, Sonoda, Gasly, Leclerc, Ricardo, Ocon, Norris, Perez, wow, and then Alonso. Why that is so crazy is because the Alpines were actually pretty fast on the leaderboard during free practice session two, and they drop down the order according to AWS's calculations. Now Perez is way off the pace and so that could be someone who will turn around in free practice session three and that's why you want to take these insights as projections not as pure forecasting truth. 
But now this is why we got to look at their qualifying pace right before the end of the session. I took a screenshot around seven minutes and 45 seconds left in the session because it was the last time I saw a tire update before Leclerc's crash. Most of these positions held because people weren't setting faster times. So Hamilton with the fastest lap during free practice session two did it on mediums, followed by Bottas with softs, then Gasly with hards, and then Verstappen with mediums. And so that means that there is a lot of pace that still can be unlocked going into qualifying. And it all comes down to those two things, traffic and what are their fuel loads. Verstappen, we know for a fact during the practice session had a higher fuel load, so he could probably get faster times once he switches over to softs for qualifying. After Verstappen, we had Alonso on softs, followed by Ocon on mediums. And so this is another thing. If you're trying to decide between the two Alpine drivers, recognize that they may have had different fuel loads and they were on different tire compounds, followed by Sainz and Sonoda on softs. So it's interesting. Gasly on a hard set the third fastest time, but the AWS was still projecting Sonoda a little bit faster. This is why you got to take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt. And then Perez down in ninth with mediums, with Leclerc in 10th with mediums, and then Ricardo on 11th with softs, Norris on 12th with mediums. And then that's where the sadness of Leclerc's crash comes into play because any pace that he might have had is probably going out the window, which is going to make it easier for who I'm going to pick on my team. It's probably going to be Sainz or one of the other drivers. I don't see the McLaren suddenly getting pace. That's unfortunate. It's now time for my picks. On the left, I've got a team where I try to do minimal trading, try to run the numbers throughout the season. It is valued at 107.1 million. And then team two, which I do my day training with, is a 109.7 million. And that budget difference can make an impact. The problem is that now that it's been very consistent in the last few races, I'm having to make the decision of running the same team. I did a last race with I had Leclerc. Now I've got signs because of the huge crash Leclerc had. Let's look at some of the options though. On team one, let's say that I want Botas instead of Perez. Can I pick him up? Nope, he is too much. And the gap was 1.5 million. But that does mean on team two, because of that extra day trading cost cap difference, I can pick up Botas. And if I pick up Botas, then I could then turbo him. Excuse me, I don't think you can turbo. Hold on, let's double check. You must select one driver per team to be your turbo driver. That driver must cost less than 20 million. Oof. So this is the difficulty because if I drop Perez for Botas, I cannot turbo Botas. So then who in the world would I turbo? And in this case, I would probably have to choose between Gasly or Signs. Signs does have his quality streak. So if you turbo him and he gets his plus five points, then boom, that becomes 10. Is he going to be strong enough though over the course of a race? Perez looks way off the pace, and so it might be safe to switch off Perez for Botas, but if Perez is able to turn things around, he might get a decent haul of points, and that's why it's really tricky to pick up Botas instead of Perez because of that turbo that Perez could potentially get. To put things in perspective, over the course of the season, Botas has scored 477.5 points, whereas Perez has scored 463.5 points. So that means because Perez is able to be turboed, he would double practically the points that you could have got with Botas. That is crazy. Let's look at signs. Signs 386 points. So he's roughly 80 points behind Perez. Ooh, that's going to make it tough. You got to let me know in the comments below, should I go Botas over Perez? And if so, who do I turbo? And there we have it, three statistical secrets for the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix. Because it's the very first time anyone's raced at this track, there are so many unknowns. So I tried to give you some guiding principles as to what you to look for going into free practice session three. Please put in the comments below who you recommend, who you're thinking about, and we're gonna have to brainstorm together because with the unpredictability of a new track, hard close walls that could cause safety cars, red flags, there could be a lot of mayhem. And I hope that your team and my team are able to come out on the other end with maximum points. And until next time, I'll see you on the pit wall.